Moments away from the final event of the 2019 Arnold Strongman Classic from the Battel Grand Ballroom in Columbus, Our Ohio. Man, I'm Sean Woodland alongside Our Dr. Bill Crawford. Coming up, money, the former Sean champions of the Arnold else. Strongman Classic gathered in one right spot for this crowd that is awaiting to watch the fifth to and Columbus. final event Everyone of this Strongman competition. In fact, Arnold himself just hosted a fantastic event a few weeks ago in Santa Monica. And they we are through four of five events. On Santa Monica. Half Thor Bjornsson and Martins Lisi's are the only two the men alive for the championship, with Bjornsson having a six-point lead over Lisi's. Jerry Pritchett in ninth place has withdrawn from the competition, so he is now out. Alexei Novikov, who is held out of event number four, the Austrian Oak, because he was being checked by the medical staff due to an injury, has gotten clearance. He is back in the competition, so that is good news for the rookie out of the Ukraine. Here are the champions who are about to take the stage. Two of them are currently competing. That's Hathor Bjornsson, who is looking for his second straight Arnold Strongman Championship, and Brian Shaw, who has won three Arnold Classics. But you want to talk about a Mount Rushmore of Strongman names, this is it. Yes, only eight champions in the past. Eight of those championships have been gained by Zadruna Saviskis, arguably the one of the greatest strongmen who ever lived. Also uh, rounded out with Brian Shaw, who's in that class with three wins. Now Hathor Bjornsson with one win and several others with one win. But this is an impressive group of athletes, many of them also World's Strongest Men, uh, competitors and winners as well. Quite the impressive list of athletes. Here's what is on the line in the 2019 Arnold Strongman Classic prize money awarded to all the competitors and the person who wins this competition will get 72 What's your proper introduction? Wow, I kind of spoiled it. So what we're doing this year, this year to honor the great Terry Todd, we have assembled every previous winner of the Arnold Sports Classic Ch Ch Strongman Championship. We have the greatest strongman in history and you saw the first one. The man who won the inaugural Arnold Strongman back in 2002. He's been my co-host all weekend. He's the WWE Hall of Fame. Twice he represented America going to the Olympics as a U.S. weightlifter. And he is on stage with me all night long. Give it up for my man, the legendary Mark Henry. Next up. I know, you belong out here. Next up, this man didn't win it once, he didn't win it twice. He won it eight times. He is one of the greatest strongmen in history. Zadrunas Savitskas! A legendary American. You've heard this name so long. He's here with his daughter and he's been having a tremendous time. Let him hear it, ladies and gentlemen, Derek Poundstone. Talk about an appropriate last name. And then a man who's won it three times. This year is his 10th time competing for you people. He's one of the great champions. He's from my home state of Colorado. Ladies and gentlemen, Brian Shaw. Now, unfortunately, there is one champion who can't be with us. He passed away, but we'd still love you all to honor his memory. Ladies and gentlemen, Mike Jenkins. And last night, if you were here, what I love about these strongmen is the support because the governor brought out Miles Taylor, a kid with cerebral palsy, to do some lifts. Now, helping him load the weights were Mark Henry and this other champion, Vitatos Lalas, truly embodying the spirit of strongman. And the final champion here, the man who in just a few minutes 
will be competing for another title. He is one of the strongest men in history. He's known as the mountain from Iceland. Welcome, Hafthor Julius Bilsson! These are the strong men champions throughout history. Two of them will be competing tonight, but we have a little video that shows you just what this is all about. Please take a look. Are you ready for the strongest men in the world? They're the biggest, the baddest, one of the most athletic big men on the planet will be competing here today. And we are looking forward to a show. Hyla didn't break a sweat there. Boom! Like nothing. A strong first lift out of Brian Shaw. A record breaking lift on the line for the mountain. Yes! And like nothing! Ladies and gentlemen, it's time. This is the Husafel Stone Carrier. We are set for the final event of the 2019 Arnold Strongman Classic from the Battelle Grand Ballroom in Columbus, Ohio. I'm Sean Woodland with Dr. Bill Crawford. This is how we got here over these past two days of competition. The first day all about this man, Half Dorp Bjornsson, starting off in record fashion. 1,045 pounds on his second attempt to beat the mark that he set last year by four pounds and then the mountain goes for the big one, 1,105 pounds, can't quite get it, but he does win the event and locks up 10 points in the process. Event number two, the Husafel Stone, Stone Carry, more, more of the same from Bjornsson. Two for two, winning both events on day number one, and it looked like he would run away with it, but then Martins Lisi's showing up, pushing the wheel of pain 119 feet nine inches and Bjornsson was the only man who might be able to track him down and look like he might be able to do that but Bjornsson comes up six inches shy and Martins Lisi's gets his first win of the competition event for the Austrian Oak Lisi's and Bjornsson two of four men to lift the oak up and over their heads 
two times. It was a four-way tie for the event win. This is where we stand coming into the final event. Hafthor Bjornsson with a six-point lead over Martins Lises. Lises is going to have to win this event and probably get a lot of help if he wants to jump Hafthor Bjornsson and win the Arnold Strongman Classic. Event number five is the stone to shoulder 410 pounds. They have two and a half minutes to bring this from the ground to their shoulder. And when you're dealing with an odd object like this, there are a lot of keys you need to keep in mind. Yes, first is reading the stone. You've got to be able to get the balance points, get your hands under the stone, and lift it off the ground and get it into a good position. In other words, get it up at least to your lap. And then the second point is that you need to have a position that you can lift it up to your shoulder. That's the point of this is stone to shoulder. So turning the stone any way that you need to, feeling the balance of the, of the stone, and then getting it up on your shoulder. The, the point about a natural stone is that it's not made to be lifted. It's just taken from nature, and it's not a barbell, so it's got its own idiosyncrasies, and you've got to go with what it gives you. And this is the famous Ode Haugen tombstone. And last year, Matthews Kaloskowski put on a show with this thing. And, I, Bill, we were talking about this in Santa Monica. That was one of the most impressive things that you said you have seen in a strongman competition. Yes, uh, after that after that um, unbelievable performance, I asked uh, Terry Todd himself, what do you think? And he said, I've never seen anything like that. And I think everyone who was, who was there agreed. He got that stone, that stone to his shoulder four times when the second-place finisher was only one time. And he did it in convincing fashion. He's been training hard to continue with that that uh, tradition that he's created for himself as a, as a specialist in this event. Kaloskowski is definitely someone we will keep, be keeping an eye on in this event. But remember, this is basically a two-person race for the championship with Hathor Bjornsson and Martins Lises, the only two men in contention to win the title of the 2019 Arnold Strongman Classic champion. But I must say that this is a lot of street cred for these athletes. They have a lot of pride in their, in their craft and what they do. They want to make sure that they finish very strong. And this is a very primal event that shows off a strong man's ability to adapt to an un, un, uh, unusual object. Now, other than Kalish Koski, who are some athletes here in the field who should do well in this? Well, uh, at least he's actually tied Kalish Koski on the stone shoulder, but that was an atlas stone. Mm -hmm. He was able to roll it up. There's a lot of tacky involved. That was in Santa Monica. Yeah, that was in Santa Monica, the 2019, just a few weeks ago. But this is a different object. And Hafthor is an Icelander, and he's been training really hard with this. I have to say that Novikov showed us a little bit more with the natural stone with his carry. So odd objects and, and events that have a little bit of strength endurance, he's, he's excelled in. At the beginning of the day, we were actually talking – as if Hathor had a really good chance to win every single event. That has never happened. That was right before the Wheel of Pain. That's his only second place finish so far in the competition. He tied for first with three other athletes in the Austrian Oak. But regardless, so far, this is one of the most dominant performances that we have seen in this competition. Absolutely. Just six inches separated him from the other win with the Wheel of Pain. And the, other, the others, he's in first place or tied for first place. Such a dominant lead. And that's a look at Ode Haugen, who is the owner of that stone that rests at center stage. The fifth and final event. Haugen taking a seat. Now, Martins Lises is the only man who has a mathematical chance of catching Hafthor Bjornsson. And... He is someone who likes to build momentum, and he has certainly done that here in this competition. Back-to-back -back first place finishes in the Wheel of Pain and then the Austrian Oak. Absolutely. What he does is he stays in the events. He doesn't let the leaders get too far ahead of him. He's strong in every event, and he doesn't let his inconsistencies get in his way. Alexei Novikov is up first, and if you are just joining us, he missed the prior event because he was being checked out by the medical staff because of an injury. They had to clear him before he was allowed back in the competition. And he has had an impressive performance here as well. Novikov making his first ever appearance at the Arnold Strongman Classic. He won the amateur competition last year. He is just 23 years old, and what we have seen from this kid would indicate that he has a very bright future ahead of him. Yes, 
He's just cleaning the the stone see, off with kind of uh, this cloth that's got a little bit of pitch on it, but it's the, but uh, tacky is not allowed to be used. At this point, I'm not going to count him out on any event because he's shown us a lot. He's putting a little tack on his you will have two and a half minutes to bring that stone from the ground to his shoulder as many times as he can. Notice the shirts that the athletes are wearing. They have uh, sticky on the front. They're gripping shirts for stone lifting. You can see. Start we will only purchase. be counting full repetitions here on the score. They get one point for bringing it to their laps, and then they will get two points to getting it to their torso. This kid just 300 pounds. Now two points. 410 pounds. Fighting to get it to his shoulder. You want to see it get up? Now trying to get it to his shoulder. Alexei Novikov struggling with the stone. Almost had it, and he will have to drop it. But he has two points, and he cannot re-earn so those two, two points. points for getting it to the torso. You cannot repeat that was very that impressive. Though. That is two points. The only way to get more points now to get it onto the shoulder. And so this weighs it. more than 100 pounds on his body weight. And this is impressive on opening effort like for Alexei that. Novikov. He almost had this, that stone to his shoulder. Times, and, him being and you wonder, had he not been so held out of that prior event, we don't know what he would have done with the Austrian Oak, but he might be in contention go. for one of the top three spots Alexei at this point. Novikov. Absolutely. Here's his second attempt. He has two points already. Now with that first attempt, he got to fill the stone. Got a better approach. It Bounce it. There you go. Novikov getting some coaching from Mark Henry, who is doing the public address announcing on the stage and just can't bring Don't it to his shoulder. Floor, ladies and gentlemen, is heavily constructed. Rogue makes the best equipment in the world. Remember, two and a half minutes for him to do as many reps as possible. We have not had it roll out to the floor yet. Just this stone does have, this stone does want to roll away from you. Having the workers still has to Notice how it's seven. very smooth as well. And you can see the battle. You know, Alexei Novikov is a good mixture of brains and brawn. He has a master's degree in international economics, and he works as a business and financial advisor when he's not training and competing. For Alexei Novikov, this rookie from Ukraine. Still trying to get that stone to the shoulder for the first time, and this is his third attempt. He's using a, a technique we'd call a top roll, so he's, he's getting it. R roughly to his knees, and he's rolling it back. Great, of, great, great effort, though. And he's going to call it, and he will have two points for getting that stone to his torso. So not the finish he wanted here in the final event, but still overall an impressive performance in the four events in which we got to see him compete. He got it up in good position. He just needs to roll it a little bit. He looks like he was going for his left shoulder. Maybe if he dropped that left hand, I would go to his right shoulder. Maybe if he dropped that left hand a little more, he could have gotten it up onto his shoulder. That sounds easy, but this is an unbelievable event. Remember, that's 409 pounds, 186 kilos. Here's Maciej Belshak out of Slovenia. His best finished fourth place in the Wheel of Pain. That was the third of these five events that was contested earlier today. Belshak looking to improve on his 20. 18 finish at the Arnold Strongman Classic. He took sixth place overall at that event. If I remember correctly, last year he got the, st the stones to his shoulder, but it rolled backwards and over his, his shoulder. He can get this onto his shoulder. Magnus for Magnuson is the head judge. He's at the bottom left hand of your screen. He needs to give the athletes a signal in order for them to drop it for the rep to count. And Belshock making his way to the shoulder. Looks like he's got it. And he did get the signal from Magnus for Magnuson as you saw him extend his free hand and show control. So one rep so far from Matyaj Belshak, great start. You know, he was waiting from last year when he had it up to his shoulder and it rolled off the back. He's so close. He's got it now. One thing about these historic implements, once they start to be seen in, in competition after competition, it's like a notch in your belt if you could say, I've shouldered that stone or I've pressed that log. This is also a grip component. We talk about the different components of strongman, being strength endurance, also being static event, also being grip event. This actually embodies all three. You have to have a great grip 
to get the stone to your lap and up your up to your body. It's an endurance event that you have to actually use time to get it up to your shoulder. And it's also a static event that you're standing on your feet. This is a great event. And Belshock is going to give this one more run. He had one good lift. I also noticed that he's wearing uh, lifting shoes. Last year, I don't believe he was wearing lifting shoes, and it rocked, and, it, and, the, and the stone pulled, even when he pulled it back, and it went over the back of his shoulder. I bet he calculated that bit into his, into his scheme this time as well. And now Belshak just having trouble finding a grip on this thing. It's just each attempt takes so much out of you. Yes, well, what happens is, notice how he really struggled to get it up to his knees, and then he could rock it back. This is a grip issue now. Think about it. They've been competing all weekend. These guys are showing a little bit of fatigue. And once your grip is gone, it's gone. And regardless how you read it, if you read it correctly, if you don't have the grip, you're just not going to pick that thing up. Correctly. There's a reason that you saved the hardest things for last. 15 seconds. Final seconds now is about 15 seconds to go for Belshock. And after a successful lift, he's had trouble just getting it to his lap. And he is done. So one good repetition for Matyaj Belshak as he closes out his 2019 Arnold Strongman Classic. That's the second best anyone's ever done with this stone. Getting one rep is a huge accomplishment. Rocked it up. He's been training. Got his leverage underneath it. Put his hand out. Got clearance to put it down. Okay. Here's the man we've wanted to see get his hands on this stone. Matyaj Kalaskowski. Tied for first, one of the four men to put the Austrian Oak over his head twice in the last event. And last year, he put on a show with the Ode Haugen tombstone. Yes, he did. He's actually been shouldering a stone that weighs 485 pounds. This is his first attempt, and he just rips that off the ground. He's feeling the pressure of being able to perform on this event because he did such a great thing last year with this stone. And there is one rep for Kalers Koski. If he breaks his own record of four repetitions, he'll walk away with $5,000. One good repetition down for Kalers Koski. Here's his second attempt. He just comes right off. Wow. And that will be two, and he barely looks taxed. He's read this stone. He knows exactly what he's going to do, and then he gets the body position to get it up to the top of the chest, hitches his shoulders and his, and his hips together, and gets under that stone. Third attempt for Kalers Koski. This also requires tremendous upper body strength, a lot of shoulder strength that people don't understand shouldering a stone because – from here, you've got to be able to hold it close to the body and then push it up. And that will be three good reps for Matthias Kieliskowski. And he still has a minute to go. Remember, he has the record. It was four, and he did it last year. Okay, we're going to watch again this, this, this next attempt. This will tie his best. He's going to get his hands on it. He's going to push his feet down. Get it to his lap. He's got that right hand in a great position to hold on to the stone. And Kalers Koski once again so he's putting on a clinic. Four good reps. He's lifted this stone eight times total. The second place man ever to ever lift this stone's only done it once. And this is something that he just got this this got this event down. Just a few more seconds to go. Kalos Koski has time for one more attempt and possibly break his own record. This would be his fifth good rep. Kalos Koski has a new record. Five reps with the old Haugen tombstone. Wow. In Incredible. This young man's been dreaming about this night in front of the big crowd, getting to show what he is best at, shouldering a massive stone. Unbelievable for Magius Kaliskowski, who last year had four good repetitions. That was a record. One year later, he beats it 
by a full rep. So he gets his hands under the stone, he pushes his feet down and lets his upper body stay pretty quiet and gets it up to his lap, gets it up. That's, that he doesn't even really put it to his chest, he just puts it right up onto his shoulder. Kalos Koski looking for his second straight first place finish in an event. We knew the events early on like the deadlift didn't favor him, but man, these last two have been in his wheelhouse. $5,000 for that man, and right now he has a large lead but he was only the third man out. Now here's Rano Heinla. Heinla struggling just to bring that stone to his lap. Well, the first thing you've got to do is read the stone correctly. Reading means that you can understand where the balance points are and get your hands under the stone. The other thing is that this is not on turf or, or sand or ground. This is on a pretty hard rubber mat. So you've got to be careful with your hands not to get them, allow them to get under, your, under that stone and get pinned against that mat. So. A little bit of a gamble when you get your hands under that stone on this surface. Heinle a little frustrated after that last attempt, after it slipped out of his hands. Remember, it is one point to get it to your lap, two points to get it to your torso. He got it to his high chest last year, I believe, and, and kind of struggling here because he, he, was, he was quite good at it last year uh, for his first time seeing the stone. But also last year, this wasn't the last event. Uh, Kalish Koski having, I'm sorry, pardon me, Heinle having all kinds of problems, and he's going to call it and walk off. No reps, no points for Rano Heinle. And he quickly exits, and Mikhail Shivlikov will be up next. This really shows the human drama that goes into athletics, and, and particularly with Strongman. You can see that uh, he was somewhat disappointed with that performance. Well, if you're Martins Lisi's you're hoping some of your fellow competitors can rack up some scores because not only does Lisi's need to win this event, he's going to need to get some people to beat the mountain in the process as well. If Hathor Bjornsson, as you take a look at what Mikhail Shivakov has done during this competition, if Hathor Bjornsson finishes sixth or better, he clinches. Yes, and so uh, that was a very important result for Rhino because he did not get the stone off and did not score one point. So if one or two other athletes do not get the stone off the ground, Hathor even laps it, he scores a point, and that could put him in a position to actually just claim this. But I know that Hathor's been training with shouldering stones, and he wants to get this up several times. But first it's this man, Mikhail Shivlikov, out of Russia, the Siberian force, two and a half minutes with that 409-pound, 186-kilo stone. He was able to get a shoulder attempt uh, to go to, he was able to, to uh, shoulder the stone last year. Really struggling to get his grip. He's got, he's got the read on it, he feels like, because he can tell he's, can, he's pretty confident where he needs to he pull on that stone. Shivlikov now for his second attempt. Decides to turn it and take a different approach now. There are no edges in that left hand. See how that's all smooth? There are no edges on that. Having trouble finding his grip. And unlike an atlas stone where you can tack up or, or, uh, or get your forearms more engaged in the stone, this is really all in your hands. And an atlas stone is perfectly round. Very easy to read that type of object. Yes, and it's also made to be lifted. This stone was not made to be lifted. Stones are defiant. That's the difference between objects that are made to be lifted. And now Shivlikov is done, and that really now puts the pressure on Martins Lisi's. Yeah, so he has got to beat Matthias Kaliskowski's mark of five, or at least tie it if he wants any chance to beat Half Thor. Yes. But it would also take uh, Half Thor. I think pretty much not even getting it off the ground. So Lisi's watching his chances sort of fade away here, but he's still going after this thing. Off the ground pretty quickly. He had a good read on that stone. He had the hand strength to get it up. Same, exact same, exact same uh, uh, technique. Now I'll remind you that he trains with Ode Haugen, and this is the Ode Haugen stone. He has seen this stone before. He has trained this stone before. 
Lisi's with one good rep so far. The mark to beat in this event is five, and that is a record. So if Lisi's is able to shoulder this thing six times, 5,000 bucks. More importantly, he'll gain points in the competition. I think that's what he's really after. And that is two for Martins Lisi's. And now the stone is off the stage. So this is going to be an issue, and I think that's the first time this has ever happened. I think they're really going to probably, uh, if, there was, if there was a clock to be stopped. Um, the Lisi's now is waiting. We don't know if they stopped the clock. But you would think they would as now basically everybody in a blue rogue shirt, all the members of the crew are going to come out here and try to haul this thing back up to the stage. They have a net with which to do it. You see it there. And now the stone is back to where Lisey's can get started again. And they're doing it, they're doing it quickly because they've stopped the clock. Uh, Jan Todd on the stage, Dr. Jan Todd, to say, okay, we've stopped the clock, but they want to do it quickly so they doesn't get too much rest and it affects the event itself. So Lisey's grip now starting to slip. He has two good reps. Remember, the mark to beat is five. That was done earlier by Matthias Kieliszkowski, and that's a record. And Lisey's with that stone back to his lap, so this will be a point if he can't get any more repetitions. And that will be two as he got it to his torso. He says he's done. And it looks like Lisey's is calling it. He's got another he's minute. He is done. But they're trying to convince him to stay on. He does have plenty of time. But Lisi might just feel like he doesn't have anything left in the tank. Thanking the crowd. And with that, this final athlete. So he, he really got it to his he got it to his lap quickly. And then the second in the second uh, phase of this, he he got it uh, up to his chest quickly. And then push with his hips upward. Just enough force to get it up onto his shoulder. And it's also a balance. You have to be able to balance and control the stone. So one athlete remains as Brian Shaw is not going to make an attempt. He and Jerry Pritchett and J.F. Carone don't make it to the final event. Carone had to withdraw after the first event. This is basically now a coronation for that man. Hafthor Bjornsson looking at his second consecutive Arnold Strongman Championship tied for first in the last event, won the first two on Friday, and then a second place by just six inches in the Wheel of Pain, and this is his first attempt. So just to reiterate, he's an Icelander, lots of stones there. He's got a tattoo on his uh, calf of Jan Paul Sigmarsson with a stone on his shoulder. This is for, this is for pride. He's left-handed. He's going to go to his left shoulder. That'll be two points. As he has it to his torso, now trying to work it to his shoulder. Bjornsson trying to find the balance point. Extends his arm, and that will be one good rep. That ties and him for that second. That's it. Is going to do it. And now it's about putting on a show for the crowd. Taking a victory lap. May not make another attempt. And Hafthor Bjornsson once again, he is the mountain among men. He is your 2019 Arnold Strongman Classic Champion. He does it to his left shoulder, which is a little bit different than going to the right shoulder, the way the stone is shaped. So he, had, he did have to struggle a bit more. He got it rested against his face, put his hand out, back down. And then the celebration, two straight years. That man has stood above all other strongmen, Half Thor Julius Bjornsson, your 2019 Arnold Strongman Classic champion and the first man to do it in back-to-back -back years since Derek Poundstone did it in 2009 and 2010.
time to recognize a wonderful Unbelievable performance for Hathor Bjornsson. We knew he was the favorite coming in. We thought it would be Brian Shaw, who was the man who would push him for the lead. Shaw, the 2017 champion, the man who finished second in 2018. But Shaw was pretty banged up. Never really a factor in the competition. And Hathor Bjornsson is your champion. Hathor stands atop the strongman world. And I think that we're going to see more uh, more dominant performances to come. Our doctors Terry and Jan Todd, who together and individually made enormous contributions to the world of fitness and strength. They raised the public's understanding of the value of all forms of strength training through their personal lifting accomplishments, their books, numerous articles, and documentary films, as well as all they have done to preserve the history of strength sports. Dr. Terry Todd began as a tennis player, earning a college scholarship to play for UT Austin. In the summer after his high school graduation, he began training and then kept lifting in secret as he also played varsity tennis at UT. Although he was ranked number one on the team by the end of his freshman year, his tennis coach kept telling Terry that lifting would make him muscle bound. And so Terry quit the team at his junior year and focused his energy on competitive weightlifting. Terry won the Junior National Olympic Weightlifting Championship in 1963 and then switched to the new sport of powerlifting, winning the first men's national championships in 1964 and the first senior nationals in 1965. Over the course of his career, he would go on to set 15 world records in powerlifting and was the first to officially squat 700 pounds and to total 1,600, 1,700, 1,800, and 1,900 pounds. Terry was also one of the first people to write about the sport of powerlifting, and his insightful, dramatic articles in the Muscle magazines and later Sports Illustrated helped powerlifting develop its unique identity as a sport. In 1978, he also wrote the sport's first book, Inside Powerlifting, and in its introduction, the great powerlifter Larry Pacifico described Terry as an immortal in powerlifting who stands on the elite plateau reserved for legends. He has been, wrote Larry, our guiding light and inspiration since powerlifting began. After finishing his PhD in 1966 with a dissertation on the history of weight training, Terry began teaching as a university professor while continuing to work as a journalist and sports promoter. In addition to his work for Sports Illustrated, Terry served as a broadcaster for both NBC and CBS, was involved in the early days of the World's Strongest Man contest, created and promoted the Strongest Man in Football contest for CBS for three years, and also opened the National Strength Research Center at Auburn University. Terry married Jan in 1973 after meeting her at Mercer University in Macon, Georgia. When Jan began weight training following their marriage, there were no women's powerlifting contests, no women's weightlifting contests, and no women's bodybuilding. However, she was intrigued by strength, and with coaching from Terry, decided to see if she could get in the Guinness Book of Records, as those were the only records that existed for women at that time. When Jan deadlifted 394.5 pounds in 1974 and made it into Guinness for the first time, she made that lift and the next several records that followed it only after getting permission to do exhibitions at men's meets. Exhibitions that inspired other women to ask for the right to compete. She remained in the Guinness Book for the next 12 years, having set more than 60 world or American records in five bodyweight classes by the time she retired to begin her PhD studies. She was the first woman to total more than 1,000, 1,100, and 1,200 pounds, and her highest records set back in 1981 were 480 pounds in the deadlift, 545.5 pounds in the squat, and 1,229 pounds in the total. Often called the world's strongest woman in newspapers and magazines like Sports Illustrated and People, Jan also appeared on dozens of television shows during her lifting career, including Johnny Carson's Tonight Show. Welcome, please, Jan Todd. Powerlifting is a relatively new sport. There's only been men's competitions for about the last 15 years. The women's competitions are just getting started. Jan also made significant contributions to the early development of women's powerlifting. 
writing the first draft of its rules, serving as head of both the American and International Women's Committees, and twice serving as national coach. She was also twice chosen as coach of the USPF men's team, making her the first woman to coach a men's team at a world championship in any strength sport. In 1978, Jan also became the first woman to lift the famous Denny Stones in Scotland a feat no other woman would master for 40 years. In 1983, the Todds moved to Austin, Texas, where they began teaching at the University of Texas and began focusing more on encouraging academic interest on the history of the Iron Game. Their work has allowed the study of strongmen, weightlifting, bodybuilding, strength coaching, and other related fitness fields to become part of the academic canon for kinesiology departments and the field of sport history. They began publishing the highly influential academic journal, Iron Game History, the Journal of Physical Culture in 1990. And together they've written more than 600 articles and seven books on strength training and or strength history. Jan Todd, now a full professor at UT Austin, is recognized as one of the most important sports historians in the world and runs a doctoral program focusing on the history of fitness and strength training that she created. The Todd's encyclopedic knowledge of history of the Iron Game also led them to begin making documentary films with Rogue Fitness about early legends like Eugene Sandow and George Hackenschmidt, and longer, critically successful films like Stoneland and Fulstaker, which can now be seen on Netflix and other media platforms. Perhaps the Todd's greatest achievement, however, has been establishing the Stark Center for Physical Culture and Sports to hold their vast collection of weight training materials and to make it available to the public. Located in a 30,000 square foot facility in the UT football stadium, the center contains more than 40,000 books, nearly every muscle magazine published in the English language, thousands of photographs, rare strongman posters from the turn of the 20th century, antique dumbbells and barbells, and artifacts and personal papers from dozens of important figures in our field, such as Lewis Sire, Warren Lincoln Travis, Joe and Betty Weeder, Pudgy Stockton, Eugen Sandow, Bob Hoffman, Tommy Kono, George Jowett, Chris Dickerson, Dr. Bob Goldman, Milo Steenborn, George Hackenschmidt, and many others. And last but certainly not least, in 2002, when Arnold Schwarzenegger and Jim Lorimer asked Terry to create a strongman contest for the Arnold Sports Festival, no one could have foreseen that he would come up with ideas that would totally transform the sport. The Arnold Strongman Classic, Terry Envisioned, is the best test of true strength in the world of strongmen and is widely regarded as the most important contest in the sport. Jan co-directed the event with Terry until his death this past summer and she took over the reins this year to make sure that the show continues as a fitting legacy to Terry and his vision. We congratulate Drs. Terry and Jan Todd on the lifetime dedicated to success in the world of fitness and strength. We are proud to honor both as the Lifetime Achievement Award recipients of 2019. And join me in congratulating the recipient of this year's Lifetime Achievement Award, Jan Todd, and the award to be presented by Arnold Schwarzenegger. Well, every year we hand out this Arnold Schwarzenegger Lifetime Achievement Award, and we are so happy and so proud to hand it this year to Jan and to Terry Todd. Because as you have seen in that video, there is no one that has done more to promote the sport of powerlifting, weightlifting, bodybuilding, and strongman competition than this couple did. And it is absolutely extraordinary the kind of work that they have done to publicize, to promote it around the world. And so you have been really welcome to our family of the Arnold Achievement Award. Okay, so congratulations for the great work.
Thank you. You're actually going to hold that for me? That is awfully nice. It's my pleasure. <laughs> thank you. Um, thank you, everybody. Thank you for the kind welcome. Thank you, obviously, to Arnold and Jim and Bob Lorimer for doing this for us. Um, this is obviously what I would have to say a somewhat bittersweet moment for me. The honor and pride that I feel tonight is, of course, you know, tempered by the fact that Terry is not here to stand beside me. Um, he should be. I think it would not be wrong to say that the, I think in many ways, kind of a, to me, an extraordinary life that we lived together and the various things that we accomplished, these were almost all inspired by the fact that Terry had what I would always refer to as a rather overactive imagination. Jim Lorimer and I used to talk about the fact that Terry was a visionary. And we would actually sort of joke about that. And as Jim knows, my job, Terry would think up the big ideas, and then my job was generally to come along behind him and kind of figure out how can we make these things work. And this was sometimes not always easy for me because Terry had no shortage of visions. And a lot of time those visions came one after the other after another, sort of like somebody else I know who's kind of standing right behind me here. And all of a sudden we're, we're tackling kind of multiple things simultaneously. Somehow, however, we were lucky in being able to make many of those dreams, many of his dreams, which of course became my dreams, somehow became real. And as those of you know who knew him personally, he was really quite extraordinary. Funny and witty and bright and compassionate. And there was nothing that he loved more than thinking about strength and talking about strength and being around the strongest people in the world. When I married Terry Todd 45 years ago, I could never have imagined a future at that time, this was 1973, in which I would one day be standing on a stage, think about this, I'm standing on a stage with a former Mr. Olympia, who has also become the governor of California, and now he has become the champion for the environment, for voting rights, and for children. Our world has changed in our lifetimes. And nor could I have imagined that I would live in a world in which women would be able to lift a 165-pound dumbbell over their head, not just once, but twice. And we didn't have one woman do that today on the stage of the Expo Hall. We had two. <laughs> and I certainly could not, at the age of 21, having grown up in the era before Title IX, when weight training was largely shunned by everybody, not just women, and when women like myself went to high schools and universities where we didn't play women's sports pretty much at all, let alone do weightlifting or bodybuilding, nor could I have imagined coming out of that early part of my life that I would one day count among my closest friends those noble giants who just competed on this stage. Men whose strength and courage inspires me to come back here year after year, even though, as you might imagine, most of my academic friends at the University of Texas don't really understand why I do this. But Terry did. Terry loved the fact that Jim Lorimer and Arnold had faith in his judgment and that they had given him a truly rare opportunity to create this unique contest, which we all know as the Arnold Classic. It is probably better to let others say whether this event has truly changed the world of strength, but I would note that if the social media is any indication of things this weekend, and no doubt Snapchatting is helping a little bit with this, it has at least it has at least created considerable excitement and interest in the sport of strongmen. And based on what I'm reading online, a lot of people have been very inspired by what happened here in Columbus. When this part of our life began and we did our first Arnold Classic in 2002, 
it obviously, and it wasn't a perfect success. But over the years, we tried to live up to the model that Jim and Arnold embraced for themselves. And every year, we tried to find ways to make it better. My aim, as I took on the task of directing the show this year, was to once again try to make the show unique and special. And I've been very lucky to have had working with me not only Steve Slater as my co-director, and his, of course, incredible stage crew, but all of the judges who have been so loyal to us through the years, and of course, most importantly, a truly incredible couple, Bill and Katie Hinegar of Rogue Fitness, whose dedication to making the, our Strongman event special, and most importantly, for being my sounding board for ideas and events, has literally known no limits this year. I think if you saw it today, the building of the incredible wall of, Wheel of Pain, the recreation of the Husafell Stone, did you realize that they actually flew basalt all the way from Iceland so we could carve it and make an exact replica? No one else that I can imagine would have possibly done something so extraordinary for a simple strongman contest, except Rogue and the Hennigers. And I wanted to just say how very, very grateful I am to them because they have allowed us to do something, I think, quite wonderful. And so in closing, let me just simply say how grateful I am to all of you for this great honor, to Arnold and to Jim and to Bob. And I want to, once again, or maybe I should say one last time, give Cher Terry a chance to have the last words. And I want to close with something that he used to say to me sometimes at the end of a long day, or when we'd had something that maybe wasn't going quite right, and you're sort of looking at each other as you're getting ready to go to bed, and you're wondering, you know, why do we do this? And he would sometimes say to me, you know, it's a good life if you don't weaken. And he never did. And neither should you. And so I thank you again. I am deeply honored. And I hope to see you all again next year. Thank you, Jen. Thank you, Jen. Can we ask you and Arnold to move out into the center with your award? And we're going to ask all of our former champions to join in for a photograph. If you go to the middle of the stage now and welcome back all of our former champions, Mark Henry. Here we go. Mark Henry, Zadrona Savikas, Derek Poundstone, Brian Shaw, Vitatis Lalas, and Hepford Julius Bjornsson. And this award and photograph is in honour of Terry Todd and respect to Jan and Terry. Put your hands together, ladies and gentlemen, for all of our former champions with Arnold and Jan Todd. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, Mark, Mark Henry, I need you back over here. Mark, back to work. Let's welcome back Mark Henry and Matt Eisman for our Strongman Award. Thank you, Matt. How about that contest we saw with the Strongman tonight, ladies and gentlemen? That was the final event. Here are your final standings for the 2019 Arnold Strongman Classic. Hathor Bjornsson with 45 points, beating Martins Lisis, who finished second. Matthias Kieloskowski, his best career finish, thanks to that record-breaking performance in that final event, will finish in third place. Hathor Bjornsson with his second straight championship. And Bill, looks like he has the potential to possibly be one of the best of all time. Absolutely. He's in a place where he can actually have a time where he has uh, stood behind Brian and Zadrunas patiently, and now he's going to move into a time of dominance, which we will uh, talk about in history because he's a, a two-time in a row uh, Arnold Strongman Classic champion, which is only the second time that's been done, and he'll go into the rest of the season with a lot of other major championships to win. Let's send it back down to the floor, Matt Iceman and Mark Henry for the rest of the award ceremony.
In eighth place, receiving a check for $4,000 from Metrex, Taylor Creed will be presenting it. We'd like to say that it's not just the injuries that uh, colored the end of the competition, but it was really the co the the ability of Martins Lisix to come on really strong and to finish in in such a, a such a convincing fashion. He gets the momentum through the competition and keeps coming. The three men who are on the stage right now all had to withdraw early because of injuries. Brian Shaw has really been beat up the entire weekend. J.F. Carone, who's on the left of your screen, withdrew after the first event after re-aggravating a hamstring injury that he's been dealing with all season long. And uh, Jerry Pritchett withdrew for the final event as well. As Alexei Novikov is now coming out. And he was another man who dealt with some medical issues. He was cleared by the staff, was able to return and Really impressed with the way he carried himself this weekend. Yes, he missed an event and still places this high in the competition. Very, very promising career. I, I think after the first couple of events that we were really impressed with him. And that is Ron O'Heinla. Finishing in the middle as much as he did last year, but, but uh, with some very convincing lifting. Last year he was in eighth place. This year... He is in sixth. Machaz Belshock next out. Machaz has got to be extremely pleased with his performance. He's a young he's a young athlete, and he's got several more years to continue to develop. Love to see him keep coming on like this. Another man who improved on his result from last year, sixth in 2018, fifth here now in 2019. As you look at this group, their their focus is going to be about getting back here, maybe redeeming themselves or continuing this uh, their performance of this year. Mikhail Shivlikov will take fourth place in his third career appearance at the Arnold Strongman Classic here in Columbus, Ohio, fifth in 2017 and then third last year. And giving the crowd one final salute and a thank you and picking up his fourth place award and check. Matus Kieliskowski. What an impressive performance in the final event. A record breaking five times. He brings that Ode Haugen tombstone from the ground to his shoulder. He picked up $5,000 for that. He gets more prize money for finishing third. His best career finish here. He matches it. He finished third also in 2015. And then he was fourth three straight times after that. So back in the top three with a young man from Poland. And now in second place. Martins Lysis. At the beginning of the competition, Bill, you said he could be a bit of an X factor here, and he indeed was in contention until the final event and taking second place. Yes, very, very terrific. He was persistent. I think instead of being called the dragon, he should be called the nightmare because this guy will not go away, and he keeps coming back. Finished tied for first in the Austrian Oak event. That was the fourth event, and won the Wheel of Pain. Well, we talked about it uh, at Santa Monica. These, were, these two young men were the future of strongmen. Here they are in second and third. But the man who is the present of strongman and a dominant performance all weekend long, his second straight Arnold Strongman Classic Championship, Hathor Bjornsson. And once again, Bill, this man is just starting to hit his stride. He started showing up here in 2012, but since 2017 he has been in the top two and now his second straight title. Well, just my uh, monitoring uh, strongman and watching it very closely for a number of years, he set up where, Ma where uh, Marius Putzanowski was to have a, a run to be very dominant for several more years. Arnold Schwarzenegger presenting him with the trophy for winning this competition in his eighth straight appearance and his second career championship. The Louis Sear Trophy. And that would have been the tie break. The Louis Sear Dumbbell would have been the tie break event had we been tied atop the overall scoreboard in points. Once again, here are your final standings. Hafthor Julius Bjornsson, 45 points to win the 2019 Arnold Strongman Classic. Martins Lysis will finish in second place and Matthews Kieliskowski matching his best career finish as he takes third. Quite a weekend for that man. It started 
with a record 1,045 pounds on the elephant bar deadlift and the momentum carried through. Martins Lises was impressive. The only man to edge out half Thor in the wheel of pain. And then a four way tie for first place in the Austrian Oak. But when we got to the cylinder shoulder, that is where Hathor Bjornsson put the finishing touches on his second straight championship. Thanks for being with us here all weekend, everybody, for Dr. Bill Crawford and our entire crew here in Columbus, Ohio. I am Sean Woodland. The road to the 2020 Arnold Strongman Classic begins now.